I'm Gordy, and my passion is to eat. I love food. I have this naughty tendency of thinking with my tummy. But that doesn't mean I cannot be a serious and reliable pup. To tell you the truth, I'm a three-year-old Labrador Retriever. And my job? Guide dog. I spent the first two years of my life training at the guide dog school. And I was the best of my class. The first year, I was placed in a family in South Auckland. Then I had a few different homes. But last year, I've met Aaron. He's got a degenerative blindness. Which means he can still see a little bit. But unfortunately, this isn't going to last. I'm his first dog ever. Not only am I here to be his eyes, but I'm also here to help him through the transition. It's a mutual trust and respect relationship. I know that when it will be time for me to retire, when I'll be 11 years old, he'll have to get another helper. But he promised me that he and his partner would keep me. I want him to know that I will be here for him. We will do this together. What happened to us? How did we end up here? I mean, it's not so bad. At least we are still together. I was so scared when those people came to our house and took everything my dad owned. But then we went for a walk. I was so relieved. I was afraid those men would have taken me. Like they took the couch, the bed, even my nice kennel. That night, we walked for a long time. Dad had to carry me at the end. And then, after what seemed like hours, we finally sat down. It was cold and dark, but it's not like we never went camping before. A few days later, I realized that we could never go back home. I know that if we wanted, Dad could go sleep in the shelters, but I'm not allowed there. So we sleep in the street. Some people are very nice. They gave us blankets, food, spear change. But most people, those that own the areas that we stay in, try to kick us out of their street. We are bad for business. Last time, it was raining very hard. Dad was soaked, but he protected me from the rain with his own jacket. People passing by were looking at him, and he was like, I'm singing in the rain, but even though he smiles on the surface, I know that his concern was to have me not too wet. I do the best to return the favor, but I'm so small. What can I do? How can I make him laugh again like he used to before? And if I die, who will cuddle up to him at night? Who will keep him warm? Who will be by his side? Maybe if I run away. Then maybe he could finally use the night shelters. Have a proper bed. A decent breakfast. But I know that if I leave, even for his own good, it will break his heart. And never will I ever abandon him when he needs me so much. I don't mind the street as long as he is there and that I can rest on his chest. Nothing else really matters to me. I just want the best for him. Our life situation may have changed drastically, but our feelings remain the same. I'll always love him. Rich or poor, happy or sad, he's always looked after me. It is my turn now to not let him down and always be there for him. Will you adopt me? How about you there? I'm nice, I swear. I'll cuddle your kids and protect your house. I'll be your best friend if only you give me a chance. My name is Jake. And my story? Well, it's not a fairy tale. I was bought by a man when I was two months old. I was very happy to have a human just for myself. My brothers and sisters may not have that chance. 
In our crate at the pet store, there were lots of other dogs. Some were there for a long time waiting to have a family. So far, so good for me. But what happened next changed me forever. I was meant to be the birthday surprise for the family's 11-year-old child. I was so happy to see a real little human. I always wanted to play with one, kissing his little face, play fetch. But when the kid saw me, he started crying. Was it my fault? Did I look scary? Shall I try to comfort him? Something was obviously not going to plan. It turned out the kid expected a tablet. And I was a disappointment. He refused to touch me and the mother said they had to return me to the pet store. That broke my heart. I heard the dad complaining, the pet store is over an hour away from here. And then it happened. The mother put me in the car and drove for a few minutes. I thought that at least I get to see my brothers and sisters again. But she stopped near the entrance of the highway. She put me in a box and left me there. She didn't turn back. I was terrified. The cars were passing by really fast. I didn't dare to move. That night, I cried. I cried a lot. And someone heard me. A woman from a nearby house. She took me in her car and that's how I ended up here. At the SPCA. I've been here for several months now. A few times I thought someone wanted to adopt me, but it didn't happen. They do take good care of me here, and volunteers often come and play with me. I am slowly trusting humans again, but it is a long process. But I still have hope that one day, someone special will come for me. I am patient. And I'm ready. My name is Emma, and this is my handler Claire. Today, I'm in a retirement home. Yesterday, I was at the hospital. No, I am neither old nor sick. I am a therapy dog. I am here to provide affection to those who don't have anyone. I bring them comfort. I lower their stress level, and my calming presence lowers their blood pressure. When we start a session, I always remain by Claire. She explains how we work and makes sure everyone is okay with me coming to them. Then we do a first tour around the room. I wag my tail to show that I am friendly and I walk around very gently. It is in my genes to be graceful and gentle. I am a greyhound. My breed is all about fineness and my fur is as smooth as the look in my eyes. While I sniff their hand and let them stroke me, Claire asks the patients questions about dogs. If they previously had one, if they know my type of breed. Then she tells stories about me and the previous dogs she owned. They were therapy dogs too. We do a second tour of the room. It is the same ritual. Sometimes, someone will take my head in their hands and pull me close to their face. I do not object. I am here for that. I feel in their grip their need of affection. I remind them of the dogs they used to love. They tell me that I am beautiful and I want to tell them that they are beautiful too. Sure, I cannot talk. But when I look at them, they seem to understand. It is time to go. Claire gets her coat and mine. It is chilly outside. They laugh as I model the latest winter fashion. My job here is done. I will come back to them, because if I don't, who will? My name is Equinox, and this is my mum and dad. They adopted me when I was just over two months old. 
they love me very much. Maybe as much as I love them. I've been very happy here so far. I love living by the beach. The house is good, even though I'm not allowed to chew on the shoes by the doorway. I go on regular walks and meet lots of new friends. But for the past few months, there have been some changes. And for what I understood, I'm going to have a little brother or sister soon. Mummy and Daddy haven't come back home yet. It was Auntie Celine that came to feed me tonight. I hope it's a little brother. It turns out I won't have a brother or a sister. Mummy keeps crying and Daddy seems unable to be close to her. I heard him on the phone, and even though I didn't understand what he was saying, by the way he said it, it sounds like it's a bad thing. Now I'm doing my best to stand by Mummy. If only I could tell her how much I love her. And I want to protect her. The feeling of her tears on my fur is so much more painful than the day the vet fixed me. The day my favourite toy got confiscated because I broke into the pantry and ate all the food. And then I got sick. Or even the day I had to leave my brothers and sisters forever. If only I could speak. I would tell her that it will be okay. That I'll always be there for her. And when I look into her eyes and she looks back into mine, I know that we understand each other. Words are completely empty and meaningless compared to the silent bond between us. I'll stand by you. I'll watch over you. Don't you worry. I'll always be here for you. <laughs>